Hey Adobe Education community, welcome to a very special edition end of year uh, series where we're having some Adobe education leaders come on to share their ideas around leadership and education technology. So if you're just tuning in the chat, whether you're joining us from one of our Adobe for Education Facebook groups or our YouTube channel or our Facebook page, please post in the chat where you're joining us from, what you teach all around the world. Uh, we'd love to connect with you and continue uh, growing our professional learning community. So as I mentioned again today, this is a very special edition where we have a panel of experts and Adobe education leaders coming on to talk about leadership and education technology. So again, I see some people just joining in now. Um, know that this is a live session. So if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and post them in the chat there in YouTube or um, within the Facebook group and we can answer um, your questions live. I already see a couple coming in now. Um, I see Georgina, who you're gonna be hearing from in just a moment. Uh, joining us um, all the way from Jordan. Um, Shannon Moore, great to see you. Another Adobe education leader joining us from Central California, uh, English teacher and tech coach. Kenneth, you'll also hear from in a moment, uh, joining us from Germany. And then we also have an educator joining us from Virginia Beach. Um, so we're really excited. Ah, and from Sweden, um, we're looking forward to um, having your questions answered live. We see Heather here um, joining us all the way from Kansas and then also from the Netherlands. Um, I'm loving all of the um, international group here. Um, hi, Andrea from um, the Adobe Education Leader Program and Diane, um, we're thrilled to see you. And, and, and so especially um, uh, really special for us today since we can't be together in person, this is a great end of year celebration. So I'm hoping that um, everyone is getting ready for the summer break. Hopefully you have some fun plans um, and we're looking forward to hearing from your colleagues here. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining our very special um, Adobe for Education Live uh, Creativity Leadership Panel. So again, this is live and you can answer or ask any questions live. Um, and today we're gonna reflect on leadership and education and how creativity has helped educators just like you discover and develop your own leadership qualities. Um, we're gonna explore behaviors and best practices uh, that creative educators Adobe, and Adobe education leaders have used uh, to stay inspired, lead colleagues, cultivate success for themselves and garner support for their departments and projects. Um, so we're looking forward to, to hearing um, from this panel of experts and I'd like to thank our educators for joining us today. So I am very excited. I'm gonna bring on everyone really quick for, for a quick welcome. And um, in, a, in a moment, you're going to hear from each educator individually. Um, so today we have Georgina Dean, we have Penny Ann Dolan, we have Dr. Hulda Black, um, Abby Guido, there's Abby, um, Ronaldo Lawrence, and Kenneth Shinaberry. Thanks everyone for joining us today. How's everybody doing? Good. Awesome. We are ready to roll. Yes, I see a lot of excitement in the chat. Um, uh, we also have educator joining us from Bangladesh, all the way from Bangladesh. And again, Diane, um, who is really excited to um, join us. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our first panelist. So we'll hear from everyone here just in a moment. Um, and Heather says, what a great crew. Um, so Heather, we're really excited to share more with you. And Diane says, yay, all the people. Uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with our very first um, panelist. So um, join me in welcoming our first guest, uh, Georgina Dean. Georgina is the Director of Learning Technology at ICS in Jordan, and her work focuses on igniting personal curiosity um, to spark learner creativity across the K-12 curriculum. Um, Georgina will guide us how to, quote, take our first steps as a creative leader. Um, and thank you, Georgina. So make sure to follow Georgina um, um, on Adobe Live for her creative live streams. And you can check out right over here her um, Twitter handle at techieleaderedu. Um, so Georgina, I will hand it off to you. Thank you for the warm welcome and a shout out to everyone who's joining across the different platforms and in the chat, feel free to drop any questions um, about the presentation. I am so excited to be here to talk about something that I am most passionate about in education, which is creativity. And so I would love to bring in my screen 
and uh, share with you guys. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So creative leadership. I uh, want to talk to you about taking our first steps as a creative leader. So to get that started, this is all about sparking creativity across your role, no matter what that is in education. And I'm going to pose three questions that I'd love you guys to consider. And if you want to share in the chat, let me know. The first question is, how do you color your world with creativity? So a little bit of colorful inspiration. The second question is really talking about your role. So how are you leading change for impact across your role? Are you just leading, you know, because these are the standards you have to do, or these are the expectations, or how are you actually trying to invoke change? So that's a really important question when we think about leading through creativity. And then the last question is really flipping that when we think about design thinking and innovation. We want to think about how are we leading through creativity. And it's not about leading with creativity. Of course, all of the different prepositions, they're important. But when we think about leading and inspiring and creating and fostering those spaces where people feel free to create, it really is through creativity. How are we honing in and funneling through that creative spark that exists in each of us to really foster creative problem solving across the curriculum. So have a think about those questions. If you'd like to share in the chat, please feel free. Um, wanted to bring in this quote here. Leadership is more who you are than what you do by Brian Tacey. And this deck is shared out um, in the description. You can click on these buttons in the Adobe Spark page. And we want to think about leadership is never about the title. It's not about uh, everything that's written on your bibliography, on your bio card, etc. And it's certainly not how I opened, although the lovely Clara introduced me. It's about who we are on the inside, those relationships that we're able to build. And with that trust and relationship, how are we then sparking creativity? I'd love to introduce this probably comes as no surprise to the rest of you Maya Angelou and of course you can connect in creative spaces that's linked below she says you can't use up creativity the more you use the more you have and we're, I'm going to share a little story in just a second that really dives into exactly just that that just when you think you've exhausted everything that you're actually good at guess what it's going to spark and it's an infinite loop of creativity so I hope that brings you some inspiration as well and then a little bit for myself a uh, personal quote creation is not just an act it's a mindful process of innovation Process is my word uh, for 2021, my one word 2021. And this process of creative leadership and this journey that I've personally been on to learn to illustrate uh, live on uh, Behance has really been a process for me. And it's a journey that I don't imagine is ever going to end um, in this lifetime. So you can share all about my creative spaces by clicking on the link below as well. So that leads me to my next point. So we talked a little bit about leadership and about creativity. So what exactly does that mean to support the education spaces that we are present in, exploring, supporting? So this is an example of an Adobe Spark portfolio that one of the students in a class that I'm supporting this year created. And each um, of these buttons here lead to a space. So it's kind of like a table of contents. And I'm just, we have limited time today. So I'm just going to go through and share with you the icon boarding. When we spark creativity across education, we're sparking design process from visual learning and thinking about what could be and that's meaningful and purposeful. So these are icons that are related to this student's individual life. These are images that they believe represent who they are. And if education is not all about who we are and amplifying our message in inspiring creative ways, then what is we doing this all for, right? So as you scroll down, you'll start to see what happens to these visual learnings and it starting to share the message, little quotes going into the Adobe Sparks. And then as we go down, how do these start to be developed and challenging through creativity? So now we start to see icons being developed in Adobe Illustrator and you can really see the creativity process. This student is a scuba diver and the different colors and you can see that the panels on the sides of their work are being shared, some really creative things. I would go as far as to say that these students are even more talented than myself in these tools. And that's how it should be. Creative leadership is not about what we bring to the table, regardless of 
being um, being a expert or not in your tool. Creative leadership is about empowering creativity across your community. It's about empowering voices as leaders. So I'm just scrolling through as I'm sharing this important message to so that you can see exactly what students are capable of producing if we just give them the time and the space to do so. So that's a little bit about how we can have a positive impact as a creative leader. Let's talk about my own journey. As a child, I am uh, I consider myself a third uh, culture person. Uh, having lived in different spaces across the globe and speaking different languages. And um, I never consider, although creativity is definitely built for my languages and I'm a flute player, um, it I was never good at illustration. My sister, I would go as far as to say as, you know, on the lines of, of Hannah, who is a popular AEL here, very talented illustrator, and also Teresa Jackson, so shout out to my colleagues. And I, when I first got my first teaching job in Egypt a couple decades ago, I could barely draw a stick figure on a chalkboard because back then we didn't have digital tools. And although I felt that I was a creative individual, I thought that I was not an illustrator. And what I've learned by taking my first steps in this part of my creative journey, I found that actually, the word yet is probably the most important piece of vocabulary I've added to my process and to my journey as a leader. So I stream every week and I didn't know how to draw it all. I've never taken an illustration lesson. I opted for music in high school instead of um, choosing art. And I really didn't have any experience. But when you click on my bio card later, you'll be able to connect with EDUTGIF. And I literally stream from my iPad a blank canvas and I take a risk. Every second of my live stream, every Friday morning, is Georgina putting myself out there and not having a clue how to use the brushes, the tools, how the watercolors work together, how the oils come together. But I am having the time of my life. And that's what it's about it's about invoking and fostering passion and curiosity and igniting the spark for what people are really excited about. When I put my my Apple Pencil on my iPad when I first got it a couple years ago and was like, oh, this is so cool. That's that curiosity and that's what we try to foster across education. So as you go through, there's different, um, different sections. We stream every Friday and I am learning. This uh, is an epic example here of learning to just color in a simple basic skill that is, guess what, is not just for six-year-olds because I am having the time of my life coloring in the NASA pictures of the Land Rover um, landing. Here is gamification, creating cards that educators could use in their classrooms in early years to be able to identify fruits. Um, and then down here, I've got a few sketch notes. I really enjoy sketch noting to learning. Creativity in this regard is also about visual learning, is about not just being able to put on paper what we learn, but also how we're processing the choices of colors and lines and the textures. So as you can see, I'm working through my process. The sketch note on the very, very left is something that I drew very early on. And then as you make your way forward to the right, you can see that there is progression. So it's a constant learning journey. And then guess what else happens? It also sparks things that I want to do to support educators in their journey. So I've linked in a couple of remixable templates, mindful goals, really simple things that you can can create an Adobe Spark to support leaders, support educators. Um, so take a look at those. This was inspired by the Adobe Creativity um, Creativity Crew uh, for the ACE program, and I remixed that for for students. So um, the wonderful Jen Williams shared that out a little while ago on Twitter for educators. You know, who are we taking in our in our balloons with us that uplift us in education? And I thought, hey, let's do the same for students. So I remixed it in this business of education, it is constant sparks, it is constant inspiration, and it is founded in creativity. And as we'll see at the very end, I'm almost done here because I'm almost out of time. Sir Ken Robinson, this is one of my favorite quotes. If you have seen my live streams before, you'll have heard me say this previously. The role of a creative leader is not to have all the ideas. It's to create a culture where everyone can have ideas and they feel that their ideas are valued. 
So I want to leave that little shift seed with you guys. When you think about developing creative culture and when you think about taking your first risks, and it is in the ISTE standards, that whole idea of co-constructing, you want to put yourself out there on the line with your students. We're not in the day and age anymore of regurgitating information in education. We are in the digital era, the era where students should be owning their learning through creative digital integration, through their own design thinking process, built from their own curious questions of real problems that exist in the world that they creatively want to solve. And that starts right here with each of us. So we need to think about what are the values that we're doing to foster this candle of curiosity? And how are we as educators going to ensure that we vertically across our school keep that curiosity burning until they actually finish the school, their school uh, career journey with us? So my challenge to all of you, this is a book that I'm going to be reading soon. And I encourage anybody who would like to go on that journey with me. Elizabeth Gilbert says, we are all just beginners here and we shall die beginners. That's not supposed to be a negative quote, guys. It means that we never stop learning. And Simon Sinek says it best when he talks about the infinite loop of learning, right? Infinite loop, that mindset that never stops. So this is next on my list, the big magic, creative living beyond fear. We need to think about in education, how are we breaking down the walls where it's not about achievement and measurement anymore? No, it is about celebrating the failure the failure that leads to the process to where people feel they can thrive as global citizens in the new abnormal. So thank you for sharing my creative journey with me. You can check me out. There's a little link here in the bottom, uh, bottom button underneath my name. It's got my EDU TGIF handle where you can join my live streams and help me to continue my learning journey and learn from all of you. So thank you for your hospitality, Clara. And I'm so excited to learn about the creative journey from my fellow educators gym leaders coming up next absolutely well thank you so much georgina for sharing that and we have some great comments in the chat that i've been following um so first of all we have um a lot of new educators joining in from egypt um egypt. Also, uh, we have leona i'm um, saying thank you and empowering yourself and your students through the creative process um camillo um nice to see you camillo taking risks awesome um namita loves the digital painting aspect um and um so also uh so helpful makes me feel less nervous about wanting to live stream absolutely we encourage everyone to share the work that they're doing um, Shannon, um, who I know you are very close with, uh, shares invoking and fostering passion and curiosity, yes, for all stakeholders. Um, so some great uh, feedback, Andrew, nice to see you, great talk, um, wonderful presentation, and um, also really motivating and so powerful words, Georgina. So thank you, Georgina, so much for taking the time to share this with us today. Um, and be sure to check out Georgina on Techie Leader EDU on Twitter. Um, and anything else you'd like to share before we move on? Just guys, we are all creative leaders. We, each of you in the stream, each of you is a creative leader. You don't need to have any experience in streaming. Just like I said, you don't need to have any experience in painting or designing, whatever it is that sparks your curiosity and passion. So get out there, give it a try. All you can do is fail, right? And when we fail, that is when we learn and that's when we grow. So yeah, that's my message. Get out there, stay creative, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Georgina. Have a great start to the summer. Great, well, we have um, some more amazing panelists coming up, so be sure to stay tuned. And again, if you're joining us from Adobe for Education Facebook or YouTube, um, please post in the chat any questions you have, things that you're excited about um, sharing or learning. Um, and we have, again, um, more folks joining us in. Amazing as usual, and Mita, great to see you for the amazing session. Um, so as I mentioned, we have our next guest, um, Penny Ann Dolan. So Penny, I'm gonna bring you you up on the stream now. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. 
Okay, what an amazing presentation, Georgina. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to follow yeah. up. Oh, we're really excited to, to hear from you. And um, Penny is a longstanding Adobe education leader. She is an associate professor of practice at Arizona State University in the Graphic Information Technology Program. <laughs> She's also the past president of the ASU University Senate for the ASU Polytechnic Campus. Um, so Penny is going to reflect on how leadership can often find you when you think and act like an entrepreneur. Um, so Penny, I'm going to hand it off to you. And just a side note, we're so thrilled to have Penny here. She is such an expert, um, and especially in photography as well. So we're really excited uh, to hear everything from you. All right. Well, I am going to share my screen. Um, I have, and I'm going to start this presentation. So first you see Catalina, but here we go. All righty. So everybody, is that good, Clara? We got it? We're good to go. Okay, all right. So my, my uh, brief talk is just a slightly different approach. Um, I know we all work with students and I knew we had wonderful people like Georgina and others that are gonna talk about the student. Um, I want to help cultivate you uh, as a leader, which is what this whole panel kind of came about in our small leadership group. And my point is that leadership often finds you um, and this is going to be about an entrepreneurial approach, and I am an accidental entrepreneur. So let me start with the origin story. Um, you can tell I watched a lot of Marvel shows during lockdown, so that's in my brain. But this is how I became an accidental entrepreneur. So, yes, that was me about 200 years ago, and I started as a photojournalist and as a photographer back in the day sorry guys, before Photoshop, um, you had two options. You either worked for a newspaper as a photojournalist or you had a studio. So I started as a photojournalist. But what I found out is it taught me to get the story, no matter what, to be insanely persistent and bold. And as my uh, photo editor had said in uh, at the New York Times, and he, and he meant it, he didn't care if a monkey got the photo, as long as we got that photo in by deadline. That was all that really, really mattered. So what did I learn? Get the job done, do your best job every time, every shoot is as if it's your whole job. Problem solving, I cannot stress enough, and I'm gonna talk about it again and again. Learning how to problem solve is essential for becoming any kind of leader. And no excuses, no excuses. So then I started a studio in Stanford, Connecticut, about oh, 40 minutes outside of the city. And again, I learned the buck stops with me, no shoots, no pay. I also learned about uh, employees, which was helpful when I got into academia, uh, learning how to work with people and also how to get paid. Um, this was, Owning a commercial studio was an amazing, amazing journey. Again, I was an accidental entrepreneur. I never anticipated that I would have my own company, and I, I did this for quite a while. What did I learn? Academics, this is so important. Negotiate for what you want. Negotiate. Don't just take what they give you. Bargain. Uh, get the job done again. Be bold no excuses. Um, being creative is such a valuable skill and developing our creativity is important and we should negotiate creatively, okay? Be creative in your negotiations to uh, get what you want. Then I went corporate. As you can see, I wasn't a lifelong educator yet um, with a company uh, that actually finally got bought like fishes swallowing fishes. American Color Graphics, and I managed some facilities. And again, I was put in a position that was kind of like being an entrepreneur in that I was, uh, I set up photo studios for the, for the corporation. And this is where I ran into Adobe Creative Suite prior to the cloud. And that was a huge revelation. Uh, it was so creative, it just boosted everything we did. I also managed the Adobe fonts during that. Uh, stint uh, handled the software licensing for the company. And for those of you that have been around for a while, I was in on the debut of Acrobat called Carousel. And when InDesign came around, it was initially launched as K12, 
the Quark Killer. So it was so exciting to meet the Adobe products and it was a game changer in pre-press, which then later became pre-media. So again, what did I learn? Get the job done, be bold, go for what you want, guys. Problem solving. I, again and again, I, I deal with this with my students all the time. When you're creative, you're solving problems. Whatever you do, be a problem solver. No excuses. Okay. Then I joined Arizona State University. Um, and this is where I get into my educational stint. Um, I was the program chair for five years. Why I mention this is not to you know, boast or anything, but I didn't look for it. I just did my job the way I always knew how to do it. Be entrepreneurial, do your best, get out there. And they came to me and said, we want to make you program chair. And that was quite uh, an, an amazing event for me. I also didn't look to be the Polytechnic campus president for the, for the Senate. They came to me. And it's not because I'm any better than anyone else, but I think if in academia you act like you, really, it's like your company, you get noticed and people will elevate you to positions of leadership. Um, that's also how I got into being an Adobe education leader. Uh, it's been, I think, 11 years now. Gosh, it's been a while. And uh, again, I was not looking for it. Um, I gave a, I was doing a Prime the Pipeline grant and somebody that was in the class uh, um, came up to me and said, you need to be an Adobe education leader. I was like, what's that? And anyway, one thing led to another. Uh, I had the great um, privilege of bringing InDesign into ASU. I was fighting with the Quark dongles and I said, this has got to change. And I got Adobe InDesign. We got, we became uh, I think at the time it was called Designing Schools or Schools That Design, which has since grown into Partners by Design. Uh, and that was so exciting to see the students be able to branch out and use all of the tools in the creative suite. And I don't have to tell you I'm preaching to the choir, but all those programs were just game changers. Okay. So what were the lessons learned? Again, lessons learned was Get the job done. Be, be as bold as you can. Problem solve, problem solve. No excuses. Uh, if, you, if you fail, failure is not the falling down. Failure is the staying down. If you fail, you just get up and you do it again. Uh, and everything you do um, will, be, will benefit from an entrepreneurial approach, including your creativity. You're solving problems, remember. Um, it, there, there is such a difference. Uh, and again, I was an accidental entrepreneur, never intended to be, came to education late. Uh, and when I was chair, I would do workshops also with faculty because it was really important for people to get out of their comfort zone and, and try to try new things. That's the heart of being a creative is no fear. You, you've got to jump off the cliff a lot of times. <laughs> So here's what my takeaway is for you guys. Treat your job as though it's your own company. Aim for more than 100%. Get that job done. Seek to be the best that you can uh, be and who you are. And innovate and create. Learn your tools. You all know that. I don't have to stress that. If you're an entrepreneur and everything you do, interestingly enough, leadership will find you. So I thank you so much for your time. I, I think I am out of time. Um, I, uh, you can reach me at pd at asu.edu. I've been there a long time. I have the simplest email. And at this point, Clara, I think I stopped sharing. I think that's what I do. Well, thank you, Penny, so much for sharing that. I'm just going to share some of the comments in the chat here. Um, so Namita, who's joining us from India, says, amazing and inspiring. Um, and I love seeing your background as a photojournalist and working for the New York Times and others and um, how exciting that has been and how you've brought that into education. Um, Georgina says, failure is crucial to growing. Um, love that. Um, we also have um, problem solver equals designer and designer equals problem solver. So it's one in the same. 
Uh, Shannon says, failure is not the falling down. Failure is the staying down. This is a great reminder. I love that quote um, and is really powerful as we're continuing to think about all of the obstacles that are coming our way as educators uh, this, this academic year. Um, and then we have more, so many comments in here. Uh, great insight. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Thank you. Great advice. What an amazing presentation. Thank you, Penny. Um, Shai Shri, who's um, joining us also from India, says, thank you, Penny. It's so nice to hear from you. Um, uh, Mustafa says, thank you for the excellent presentation. And I love how it is related to entrepreneurship. So. Thank you again, Penny, so much, and for all of your work as an Adobe Education Leader. My pleasure, thank you. Well, if you're just joining us um, from Facebook, uh, groups, our Facebook uh, Adobe for Education page or our YouTube channel, we have a very special edition of Adobe education leaders who are sharing their leadership qualities in creativity. Um, so stay tuned to hear from more educators who are joining us from all around the world. Um, be sure to post in the chat any comments. This is a live um, panel um, and presentation, so we want to be able to share those. I see Morama says, thank you so much, Penny. More great uh, comments from Penny as well and uh, new educators joining us in. So um, this is recorded as well. So you can go back and check out Penny's presentation, check out Georgina's presentation if you wanna share that um, with your colleagues or with your students. Um, so up next in this very special edition uh, live stream, again, to close out the academic year as we have Adobe Education Leaders sharing um, leadership and creativity. We have our next guest is Adobe Education Leader, Hulda Black. Um, Hulda is an Associate Professor of Marketing at Illinois State University and Sequence Leader of Integrated Marketing Communications. Hulda will share how she teaches her students to leverage networking skills to achieve success. Um, so I'm gonna bring um, Hulda on right now. And um, Hulda, I will hand it off to you to, to share um, your presentation. Oh, I think we're going to unmute really quickly. And again, this is Sorry a live about stream. That. Yep. It, I know. It's I happened love, to like me at least said, every time. <laughs> I love the organicness of it, right? It's just how it go, how we roll with it sometimes. Well, thank you so much, Claire. I'm happy to be here. I um, am. I do not have a formal presentation that I'm going to share my screen with. I will share something at the end as an example from my students. Um, but with such a short time span, I know myself too well, and I would uh, probably go over if I did that. Um, so thank you so much for the introduction, Clara. Um, I am not a leader in the traditional sense in terms of job title or employees I manage. In fact, I joke that I try to stay away from the administration side in academia um, because really I see my opportunity as a leader um, in the classroom. And what I'm gonna share with you today is my little backstory of how I came to basically have kind of my foundation and what I build my students up on as networking and professionalism in the classroom. Obviously, I'm also working and teaching them strategy and marketing communication. I am in the College of Business, so not as much of the design aspect, but I really have kind of generated a name for myself in terms of professionalism and networking. Um, and I lead workshops at our university on how at any classroom across the university, how you can incorporate professionalism and networking into your classroom. So what I really try to do in the classroom is I want my students to see my classroom as their workplace. And so we can try to start to treat that classroom that they would be treating as their job. Um, so I expect similar things in professionalism and communication, um, how they handle devices and technology in the classroom, just like you would in a regular um, you know, business career. So I gear it towards the careers my students would be in. Um, and then when I talk to other educators, we gear it towards uh, areas that their students would be going into. Um, so I'm not going to talk as much about the professionalism side today because the networking side is really where um, some of my story comes from, as well as where I've added that creativity into it as well. Um, but how did I get here? We all have our little story um, of how these things become very important to us. And mine was from a tennis coach when I played college tennis, pretty gruff individual, but made me work hard. And 
he had a couple things that he always instilled at us. And one was fake it till you make it. So that's where the professionalism kind of comes in mind where I was actually always the bottom of the team and barely making it. And uh, he just told me to act like I was a winner and they wouldn't know any different. So I just faked it till I made it. Um, and I have told my students that when they're nervous about going into job interviews or anything, and we try to practice that in the classroom. Um, and then from the networking side, I had professors that basically encouraged me to reach out to talk to three new people every week and find something in common with that person and stay in touch. And so that's really where, you know, these weak ties, these networking ties have really brought me to where I am today. It's the reason I got my PhD. It's the reason I met my husband. It's the reason I'm an Adobe education leader. Um, and here with you all today is just making those connections. So I want to instill that with my students. Um, and the quote, if you have looked at the Spark page that I love is by Bill Nye, and it says, everyone that you will ever meet knows something that you don't. So I try to really instill that with my students that every single person they meet has something that they can offer them. And so what I have done in the classroom to kind of leverage this networking is I have a project where the students have to cold contact individuals and they have to they have to reach out to individuals until they can have an actual conversation. Um, it used to be always on the phone, um, but now of course we've added Zoom because everybody's very comfortable with that or, or video chatting, how, whatever their means may be. And the student feedback that I get from these conversations has just been incredible and the opportunities um, and what they're learning from having these connections um, has just been really, really outstanding. And so when I got involved, this is my first year, finishing my first year as an Adobe education leader. So when I got involved with Adobe, I wanted to try to, to add that creativity aspect because in the College of Business, it's not as naturally and intuitive that we would add that creativity aspect. So when they have to do this project, um, one of the most natural things was that I was going to have them kind of submit their learning and what they found in a Spark page. So I am going to go ahead now, uh, Clara, and share my screen. Um, let me just make sure that it's there before I, there we go, perfect, okay. So this is just one from this past semester and just to kind of give you an idea, again, what they do, what they do. and they have you know some outcomes of having to submit who they contacted with and they're supposed to kind of keep notes. Um, I, I always equate it to a dental hygienist. They always remember all the little things and it's just because they take notes on every visit. Um, but what's really cool is this used to just be, this used to just be this boring paper that they turned in and I would read. Um, and now it's turned into this visual, fun, exciting thing um, with the people that they are meeting. So she had got to have a conversation with Elizabeth from CDW. She actually, she was an overachiever. She was one of my great students. She had a conversation with Andrew. Um, and then as well, she had a conversation with Jared. And these are all people that they, she did not know, had never talked to these people before and really just had a great experience um, reaching out, talking to people and just you know, having that ability and confidence to talk and have a conversation with somebody you've never met before. Um, and this other one I'll just share, she put this little visual in here and I love this, networking is not collecting contacts, networking is about planting relationships. And it really goes back to what Georgina said, you know, that leadership is really about who they are and how they act and the relationships they build. Um, and then I also relate it really well to what Penny said because, uh, you know, a lot of times these students are, you know, failing to make the contact or nobody returns their call. I mean, it's kind of like cold calling in sales. And, you know, it's that gift of failure, right? Once they finally succeed, that they're getting back up. Um, it, it's just, it's, they're so excited. They're like, I got to have this great conversation. So um, it's really how I got where I am today, um, all of all the way along. And so I'm really just focused on instilling that in my students that kind of the door and the opportunity is open to them. Um, they just have to be willing to take that risk and reach out. So that is all I have. I wanted to keep it real short and sweet. Um, I know we have lots of awesome information and presenters here today. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us, Hulda, and um, some great comments from all of your um, posts in there. Um, so I'm going to scroll up. Wow, they're coming in so fast. Um, Camillo says, networking is a surprisingly undercultivated skill in K-12 education, cold contacting individuals until you have a real conversation. Love it. And it's incredible to see how networking and like you said, reaching out to three people a week, like how that can just expand your opportunities within your career, but also within your own professional learning. Um, so I love that. And Namita says, you are an inspirational education <laughs> leader. Um, and uh, we also have uh, Kenneth who shared, this is brilliant. I had my students go through full throttle 
full throttle on LinkedIn. And I love the idea of getting them on Zoom calls um, to connect with. Um, and Chris says, such a great way to think um, about this often uh, maligned experience. So it's great to, to see different um, ways that students can do this. And uh, Diane says, fantastic. This is something definitely looking into. Networking is so important. Um, so thank you again, Hulda, so much for, for joining us. And we're looking forward to continuing to share your work on the Adobe Education Leaders channels. Absolutely, Clara. And if anybody has any questions about how I do different things in the classroom, they're happy to reach out to me at LinkedIn or at my own estate address. And I'm happy to share because, you know, this is a community. And I love that about all the networking in the community as well. Absolutely. And just bringing back that quote um, from, from Bill Nye again, um, everyone that you meet knows something that you don't. So just the more to, to stay connected uh, with you. So thank you again. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. So again, if you're just joining in uh, the chat, I see more people have joined in since we started this live stream. Again, this is a very special edition of Adobe Education Leaders sharing their creative leadership. Um, so we're gonna continue on. This is a recorded session. Um, so you'll be able to check out everything um, that we've done live um, and continue to access those tips and resources uh, for leadership in your own institution. So thank you again to Hulda. And up next, we have Abby Guido, who's an Adobe Education Leader as well. She's an assistant professor of graphic and interactive design at Tyler School of Art and Architecture at Temple University. So Abby's going to be sharing how to build your students' creative leadership skills through challenging, creative, and collaborative projects. Um, so welcome. I'm going to bring Abby on right now. Thank you so much for joining us today, Abby, and I will hand it off to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, and thank you, everyone who's presented. Uh, I loved hearing about networking, Hilda, and, and I wanted to add in, too, sometimes when my students are hesitant, I tell them to think about themselves five years down the road, and how would they feel if someone reached out to them and said, hey, my professor recommended I reach out to you. You know, would you be willing to talk? And they always say, of course, I'm going to make time for someone. And I always say, okay, now the tables are turned, so you're the student, and that, that sometimes helps ease them into it, um, especially if they start by reaching out to alumni of the program. It gives them that little connection to get started. So just wanted to throw that in. Networking is so important for um, building these leadership skills. So if I could go ahead and share my screen, I'm going to get started. So we're going to talk today about empowering leadership through creative collaboration. So I um, I loved hearing everyone and I feel like what I'm about to share connects a lot of what we've been seeing because it talks both about myself and my own journey to um, a leadership, I won't say position because in title I don't have a leadership position, but I do consider myself a leader. Um, and then also how I help empower my students to uh, see that they too can be leaders, especially without having a title that, uh, that signifies they are a leader. So first, who am I? Um, as Clara mentioned, I'm an assistant professor of graphic and interactive design. Uh, my background is that I do have a BFA in design. Um, after I graduated from undergrad, I worked in New York for a while. I was out in LA for a while before heading back to uh, where I was originally from, which is Philadelphia, and um, slowly got into teaching. Um, being a, a teacher, a professor without a uh, advanced degree, uh, limited what position I could get. So it was really important to me that I went back and uh, acquired a position, a degree that would allow me to then uh, continue in higher education, which is what led me to get an MBA. So I had been running my own business and like many other creatives out there, just kind of get thrown into it. I, I relate to Penny thinking like I would never be a business owner, um, but but you end up there. And without having some of those skills of how to run a business, I always thought in my head like, no, yeah, getting an MBA would be interesting. And uh, I was afforded the opportunity being that I was also teaching full time. And I had a focus in, in HR, which, Beforehand, I would have thought there's no way I would be interested in HR, but little did I know that concentration in HR really was a concentration in, in how to lead teams. And for me, I looked at it directly as leading teams and leading classrooms. And there's definitely a connection in, in what you learn when you learn about managing high-performing teams to managing a, a classroom. Um, I also am a mover shaker. So I'm not content with just saying this is how it's always been done so we're going to keep doing it this way um, and that just has been in me forever questioning everything and 
I don't ever want to lose that. And I, and I work very hard to make sure I don't, because I think that's very important if you're thinking about how you can lead is thinking about what can you do to improve what's what's been happening. So how my MBA impacted my teaching. Um, one of the biggest things that I, I learned right away was that sometimes good enough is okay. And I, I think as uh, creative folks, we like to polish everything and, and we take everything personal. And so we're putting ourselves into our work and, and no matter what it is. And so it's it's hard to say it's good enough and to, and to stop. But I, I did learn that, that sometimes good enough is okay. Um, and that teamwork can work. A lot of us as students, when we're in a position, have a very jaded view of teamwork. And, and I learned through my education and my MBA that, that you can work well together and it can improve the process. Um, simple recognition goes a long way. Uh, a good example of this is while I was getting my MBA, I was also managing a lot of our adjuncts and I created a award. It was called the Adjunct Award. It's just in our department. It's not, you know, officially a sanctioned award through the university. But just by each year recognizing one of our part-time faculty members who's doing an outstanding job, it improved the morale across the whole community. Um, saying thanks and giving credit. I, I mean, I, I think a lot of us are seeing this differently these days. And I make a very conscious effort to make sure I'm saying we as much as I can, because I know even though I may be spearheading something, I'm never doing it alone. And so it's very important to give credit and to say thanks. You know, I, I'm the person who sends that extra email after meeting with the provost at the university and hearing something just to say thanks. And, and you know, it may be viewed sometimes like, oh, there's Abby. She's just, she's kissing butt again. Um, but I, I, it's not, it's genuine. I, I, I appreciate when people say thank you to me and I, I want to return that to others. Um, confidence in networking. I'll share a little story. My first um, AEL summit when I was with the Adobe Education Leaders, I was really nervous because I didn't know anyone. And, you know, while I have my own credentials and my own history, I was scared. What if I don't find anyone to talk to? What if I'm that person sitting by themselves? And, you know, I, I've suddenly gained my confidence and I put this in here because I realized that a lot of people are feeling that way. And I tell my students that, that I still feel that way. I felt nervous today coming on here. And I, I think it's important that we're honest about that. Um, and then you don't need a title to lead. Uh, so, and, and that goes along with leadership as a skill because I teach leadership to, you know, students who are probably 18 to 22, some are outliers, but, you know, they look at themselves and think, how can I be a leader? I'm still young. I'm just learning. But I think it's important to understand that you can learn leadership skills and that you can lead in your own life, even without that title. And then, and then the, I can be, um, you know, I went into my MBA thinking I'm getting an MBA because I want to get to that next position teaching. And one week in, I thought, actually, you know, I can, I can be a dean one day, I can do whatever I want. It, it gave me the confidence to look at myself very differently. And that was really powerful. And I'm going to pick up the speed a little bit. And I think we're going to share some links because I want to talk a little about how I bring this into the classroom. Um, so I'm going to talk as fast as I can about a project that uh, my students did in a graduate design class. And the class was very small because this was during the pandemic and, and a lot of students weren't able to come to the country for school. Um, and the prompt was simple but complex to design a new line of products for a smart home. And what I do is I um, took this advice from another uh, AEL out there um, that I have my students bring their resumes in class day one. And what we do, go back to my slideshow is they have job descriptions and I put these together and each student decides what position they'd like to apply for. They pick two and they have resumes. And this past year, what I did was I actually brought in a, um, it was an alum from our program, who's a partner at a firm barrel now in New York. And he came into the class virtually and he helped me interview the students. So we interviewed for them for the jobs. And we did this in front of everyone so that we gave everyone else the opportunity to hear how an interview goes and maybe be inspired by how someone else answers questions. Um, these are just some of the folks throughout the semester going back to networking each week i would bring in someone different who's in the field to contribute to the critique of the work 
Uh, and then I threw this in because it's just funny, you know, how this project impacted the students. And I really look at it as they learned everything I learned in my MBA. And that's how I approach this class is how can I help um, them understand what I was able to take? Um, for instance, in their simple recognition goes a long way. We created a cheers channel on the Slack page that we all communicated through. And I showed by example, and whenever a student went above and beyond, or, you know, even a simple thing just was very present that day in class, I throw a little cheers in the channel, you know, thanks so much, Marissa, really appreciate your work today. You know, you really went above and beyond. And by demonstrating and showing them that they start doing it to the, each other. And I talk about this a lot with them because I think that if we say thanks and if we congratulate someone when they do a good job, it then allows us to have an in if there is an issue. And if you have that positive work environment, when concerns do come up, it's a little easier to bring them up if they know that you're not just saying it for the heck of it, you're saying it because there is a problem, but you have this relationship already and you can work through them. Um, so with as much time I have left, I'm going to look show a little bit of this project because I think it, it really demonstrate how amazing the work can be when they work well together. Uh, the company they came up with was called Rhea. This was some of their logo sketches. This here is the uh, design system they created. This is a really complex project that relied so much on teamwork because they created a system of devices, a hub and three other devices, and they wanted the experience for the user to be consistent. And so they were constantly working together to make sure visually and also user experience wise, they worked the same way. Um, one of the students has some 3D skills, so was able to actually make some models. This is the some screens from the app. Um, this was a really challenging piece about that consistency was they wanted to make sure the alerts, no matter which device you were in, all worked the same. We had a great illustrator in the group who made illustrations for everyone. This was a door lock. This is the uh, the coffee maker. I want this so bad. You can pick up your phone right now and just say new drink and I could go downstairs and it would be ready for me. Uh, and then at the end, they put together a, um, a medium case study. So we're going to share this link. So if you all want to hear more about the work they did, you can check it out. And finally, um, I have a podcast. It's all about design collaboration. And, and to me, collaboration is kind of the backbone of, of leadership. And so please, if you're interested, check out the podcast, reach out to me. I too love to connect, love to network. So please find me on all of the social platforms you use. So thank you all so much. Well, thank you, Abby, so much for sharing all this with us. And we posted those in the chat. So if you're following us on Facebook or YouTube, you can see um, all of those links, um, the student examples that Abby shared in addition to her podcast. Um, so I'm just going to share some of these comments coming in from the chat. Um, Absolutely, we are just adult-sized kids with some of the fa same fears and insecurities, and we have to fake it until we make it, even if we fail the first time we get back up again. Um, absolutely, and um, also Kenneth says, I love the idea of having them bring resumes in class day one. If they start with them at the beginning of the year, by the time the career success team comes in, at the end, they'll rock it. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of great comments. This was great, brilliant, awesome, uh, fantastic, Abby. And um, also so important to create a thankful environment um, to learn and improve. Um, and last but not least, oh, more coming in quickly. Thank you, Abby, just brilliant, very insightful. I am looking forward to following you. And uh, Claudia, who's joining us from Brazil, says collaborative work and inspiring. Thank you and congrats, Abby. So Abby, thank you again uh, so much for, and wow, the, the student examples you showed were incredible. Like that's something that I could even see, you know, in a, in a marketing um, campaign at Adobe, like looking through all of those uh, different designs. So Let's really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clara. Well, thank you again to Abby. And again, if you're just tuning in, this is a very special edition um, leadership panel of Adobe Education Leaders sharing um, leadership qualities for, for creativity and how they're um, Adobe Education Leaders in their institutions. Uh, so we have two more guests joining us. But again, if you're joining in live um, on Facebook or on YouTube, go ahead and post in the chat any questions, um, you know, feedback from the presentations. I see Andrew is in here and says, great presentation and nice student work. Uh, thank you for sharing that. So it's always great to see Andrew, um, Adobe Education Leader, joining us as well. 
Well, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get to our next panelist. Um, so um, now we're going to welcome Ronaldo Lawrence, um, who's a designer of interactive learning materials at Glynn School in Epsom, England. Um, Ronaldo gives talks on leadership and sharing our unique creative stories with the world. Um, so I'll bring Ronaldo on here now. And just a side note, if you are not following Ronaldo on LinkedIn, he has such inspirational messages that I love following and really make my week. Um, so thank you, Ronaldo, for those and for joining us today and sharing your expertise. Well, thank you so very much. If we could go straight to the presentation, please. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to come on and I just wanted to, to have a few words with you guys. Um, and I think the essence of my presentation is that you try stuff is you do things that you're scared of doing. You do things that are going to make you, just make you do something different. Um, now, Carl, how do I, I can't seem to, I don't seem to have control over this. Let's see. So I think we're able to, you should have everything from your screen in there. So if you just go to the next slide, I think we're, I, we're good. You just click have... on the next one. On slide two within. Yeah, I don't. No. No, I don't have any control over it. Hmm. So maybe we can try that again if you want to maybe. What if and again, I, this is live. We're what always. If I, uh, <laughs> what if I do this? Can you see my screen now? If I Can you see the half screen? Uh, let's see. Can you see the screen now? Uh, so now I'm seeing a try stuff um, presentation. So let's see if there's another one on here. So if There's, I click back here, can you see that? Yes. Can you see slide two now? Yes. Great. Okay. This We're is good. I. Good. We're good. <laughs> this is I. Um, I work at Glenn School in England, and I originally started off um, started out as a PE teacher. And one of the things I decided early on in my life was I wanted to try something different. And it just so happened one day I was in an office, and this guy had um, Microsoft Word up, and he also had a drawing program up and he dragged an image from the drawing program into Microsoft Word and it just completely blew my mind. And that's when I started to, you know, really start to think about technology. And I think that we as educators, we're just so fortunate to be in a position to help others help themselves. And I think also, you know, we live now in this century, you know, our challenge, I think, is to create a uh, content and create systems that makes it easy for people to learn. And as an educator, I see it as my duty to produce materials um, that are both engaging, interactive, and that I believe that can enhance other people's lives. So this is just a little bit here about some, some of the stuff that I've done. Um, and I would be remiss if I don't say this about my children. I have um, two kids. My daughter is the social media manager for Vogue Business. Um, and my son played in the 2012 Olympics, and he is also a basketball player playing professionally around. I think that all of you uh, need to understand something. And you need to understand that you have a voice. And your voice is critical for the world to be successful. Your voice is critical for somebody in your life. When they hear you talk and they hear what comes through your lips, it is critical because you are providing them with a source of inspiration for yourself. And regardless of what you think of yourself, you will be surprised at how many people look at you, especially your students. And they, you know, and it's the ones who you don't think that are watching that are watching. You would be surprised. So my voice is, I decided that if my life was worth living, my life was worth recording. And I say that all of you should do this. So I wrote a book. And the book consists of about 15, 16 chapters. And the chapters are about things that happened to me in my life and people who were, um, who've were who helped me throughout my life. And then I didn't see many people that look like me in comic books. So I created my own flipping comic book. Um, and what I wanted to do with my comic book is I wanted kids to just understand that, you know, they can do anything that they wish to do. And all of us, man, I think the one thing that I learned about COVID is that nobody knows what the hell they're doing. So anything that you want to do, you can take a chance and try to do it. At least that's what I'm doing. I don't care. So like how I got started. So I started with um, basketball and I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship. And I've always believed that 
you know, later on in my life, I believe that basketball was a way of getting me to do what I'm doing now. I was just blessed enough to have a little bit of talent, a little bit of skill, which got me a scholarship and allowed me to travel around the world. And I ended up here in England. But all of that stuff that I did before, all it did was lead me to getting my master's. It just led me to being able to help other people. That's all it did for me. That's all it did. So my sort of educational adventure um, is sort of interesting one. One of the points that I would like to point out, when I have lessons with my students, especially when I first meet them and they come into my classroom, I could care less about what the curriculum says. I really could. What I want to know is I want me, I want them to tell them, tell me, tell them about themselves to me. I want them to explain who they are. And I want them to understand that I genuinely care about them, the person, and I don't care about the curriculum. The other thing that I think that is so critical for us to do is to take who they are as young people and to interwove that with the curriculum that you're teaching. You know, and I try to do that all the time. And I just, I just think that. There are so many people who just need help these days. And there's so many people who just crave for a little bit of attention. And you, the individual who in front of these kids, you have an opportunity to give them as much attention as they need. And I've always liked to say, you know, it's up to you to create the world that you desire. And there is no way that I'm going to sit around and let somebody tell me what I'm supposed to think or tell me how I'm supposed to feel. It is up to me to create the world that I'm going to you know, create. And it's also up to me to provide space to help other people create the world that they want. Because a lot of the young people, they have no idea what is possible. And it's just being able to tell them and show them what's possible. It's being able to sit in a classroom and they don't know me from Adam. But once they found out that their journey is very similar to mine, you know, it's giving them the, the, the understanding that anything that they want to do is possible. So what I've done here is I would like to say, you know, I've taken the responsibility to, to, uh, to um, voice my support for people every day of the year. And so for over the past six years, I've not missed a single day in six years on all the plat social media platforms. I have about a 30 second or uh, 45 second um, positive message every single day, as I've said, for the last six years. And I just think that even if it's one person that I'm helping along the way, it is one person who I help to make or to feel good that particular day. And I think all of us have that power. So what I've done here um, is I've asked Carl to share this, but I've put some presentations down here, some, some links and stuff of some of the things that I've done. And I just want to very quickly, if I could just, uh, let me see, can you let me know, can you see this web page that comes up here? Can you see this web page? Yeah, so we're seeing the the links on your um, slide with content creation, and I can share those. I'll share those links in the chat. So, do you see where it says Rome, Italy? Um, so I am seeing content creation, history beyond books, not tips, media organizer, and music lessons. Okay, so it's not going to show, but you can share that. So one of the things that I do um, is I have always uh, created content for my students. So I have a group of students back in the States who are seven, eight, nine years old. So what I do is I create content for them. Um, and what I do is wherever I go in the world, I record the content. So if I present this very quickly, can you see this here? And let me know if you can see uh, this right here. Can you see the screen now? Yeah, so we're seeing uh, the content creation slide, and then I just posted the Google Doc in um, the um, in the chat. That's fine. But what I just wanted to say that um, is that I create content for students uh, back at home, and what I do wherever I go, I create videos because every single child has the right to travel the world, but some of them can't. So what I do is I take them with me every single day. And if you have an opportunity to look at some of these slides, please do. And I'd like to finish off with a few things, just a few things. So I've switched off from being a IT, from being a PE guy to an IT guy. And one of the things how I've done that is I was just quiet. I just shut up and I listened. And I've learned that you don't always have to be the person in the room that's talking. Sometimes it is better just to shut up and learn and listen, and you will be surprised at what you learn. Once you shut up, 
listen to what people are saying that is needed in the organization. Be quiet and look at all the gaps that are in the organization that you can fill. And then when you can fill them, then you let people know that you have the opportunity or you have the skills to fulfill uh, people's needs. And then when you're ready, test your ideas out on somebody who has no idea who you are because they will tell you the truth. And the other thing I wanted to say, you know, you're the sum total of your creativity, but everything that you think about in your life is about your perspective. And I just want to leave you with this one point. You're the most blessed person on this planet, but it's all about how you think about yourself. So tomorrow when you get up, get up with a different attitude if you need to. Get up understanding that you're so blessed and get up understanding that if you want to feel good about yourself, make somebody else feel better about themselves. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ronaldo, for sharing that with us. And I'm going to take that off here. And I love those final thoughts. And it's it's all about attitude and, and that decision that you make when you wake up in the morning. Um, and we have so many um, reactions just from, from your presentation today. Um, Camilo, um, joining us from Spain, says, listen, observe. When you have a potential solution, go for it. Um, and also listening is very, very important um, as being a part of that. And and, and Shannon says 100% listen and learn and imagine the sparks. Um, and I think so many times we don't stop to listen and, and really observe all of the surroundings around us and, and how it's important. And um, also, people don't understand how special they are. They really mm -hmm. don't because they look at the problems that they encounter every day without looking at their breathing. You're flipping breathing every single day, you know? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. And sometimes we take that for granted. You know, mm -hmm. we get so wrapped up in um, all of the details. And I think, like you had said before, with with COVID and the pandemic, yeah. it, it it all gave us a second to think about that. And um, another um, comment, I I think I lost it in here, but um, that half the time people don't know what they're doing <laughs> in COVID. So you have the power to to, to pave your own path. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, um, I'll end with this um, from Andrea. If you really want to feel good about yourself, make someone feel good about themselves. So I think that's a great um, note to end on. But thank you again, Ronaldo, so much for joining us today. As always, an inspiration. Well, thank you again uh, to Ronaldo and for everyone who's joining in uh, for this very special edition of our Adobe Education Leadership Panel. Um, I see a lot of great comments in here. Um, so um, very practical and useful, inspiring. Grazie from Italy, Rosanna. So thank you again um, for those who are tuning in and sharing your thoughts and your insights. We have one last speaker for you today. Um, so please join me and um, welcoming um, Kenneth Shinaberry. So Kenneth is joining us all the way um, from Germany. And um, he owns um, Dussel York City Studios um, and shares his expertise at the Digital Career Institute in Germany. Um, so Ken will share his journey from creative to influencer to educator um, and is also an incredible live streamer um, and is very frequently on Adobe Live and on Behance. So Kenneth, I'm going to add you to the stream and hand it off to you. All right. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today and to share the stage with so many inspirational people. And I think you're gonna see a lot of commonalities between uh, my story and theirs as well too. So I kinda, I'm kind of, i kinda glad that I'm going last because you'll be able to go, oh yeah, this, this sums things up kind of good. So I'm gonna talk to you today a little bit about how I went from creative to influencer to educator, all right? So the first question you guys might ask, okay, who is Ken? Well, as a student, I was your classic overachiever. You know, if a teacher gave me an assignment, I would probably hand in two to three, four projects. You could definitely ask Chris Harris, my uh, digital imaging professor. I would always hand in more than what was expected. And even my fifth grade teacher would probably tell you the same thing. Classic. That was just who I am and that's who I am today. And I don't think I'll ever change. And I, I think I kind of owe that to my teachers that I've had over the years that I have that kind of mentality. Uh, as an adult, I've decided that I don't like to be classified as this or that. I believe that it's important to continue learning and kind of grow because if you don't continue growing, you plateau. And I think as a creative, you always have to move up that ladder, so to speak. And 
for another example, I also don't like to be pigeonholed, which is something that they do in Germany. Uh, usually here, they the old saying is you learn one thing and that's what you do till you die. Uh, but that mentality I see is changing. And for example, uh, I do a little bit of everything. I'm not a generalist. When I do things, I try to be an expert in everything that I do. But I was told once that a writer couldn't be an illustrator and an illustrator couldn't be a writer. I'm like, hmm, yeah, guess what? That's false. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, don't let people hold you back and don't let people pigeonhole you into one thing. You know, if you're interested in more things, hey, experiment, grow. That's what it's all about. And as a creative, again, I'm never going to stop growing and I'm never going to stop learning. Even today, I've learned a lot today and I'm going to put that to use in what I'm doing with my class and my students as well. All right. Also, I have my creator partner in crime. Other people who've been to Adobe events know my dog, Rue. So he gets a nice little shout out right there. Uh, but I'm going to give you a little bit about my journey. And this is a very simplified journey. If you go to my LinkedIn, it's huge. It's massive. It's crazy. But in 1994, I started using Photoshop. That's that's crazy. That's right. I'm, I'm dating myself right there. All right. Then in 2000, I, worked, I moved to New York to work on my first movie. Uh, which was Julie Johnson that featured Courtney Love, uh, Kurt Cobain's wife. And I really kind of did film TV and advertising for 13 years in New York City. And I loved it. And just like Penny mentioned, I think New York and working in this kind of creative scene, I learned the importance of deadlines. I learned the importance of being a leader uh, because I was trained to be a assistant director and also a production um, manager as well too, and a production coordinator. So I, I gained that experience as a leadership early on in my career. In 2011, I became a, the technical in English instructor at Ezra, and Ezra is the premier film academy in Paris. They allow their students to come to New York and study for a semester, or well, two semesters, and I did that, and I really loved it. So that was my first dive into education. And then in 2012, I moved to Europe, where I would eventually become an influencer and a full-time educator. All right, so inspiring the community. So when producing events and speaking at conferences, I formed three simple principles. And the first one is to educate and inform. I love to share information that people can, you know, take with them. So I like to educate and inform. I think that's very important. And I think you need to do it in a way that's entertaining because that's what makes it more memorable. If people can remember something and they have a little laugh here and there, then you know what? They're going to remember that for life. And I like to inspire and challenge. And I say not just inspire, I say challenge. Because when I, even when I'm streaming on Behance, for example, when I'm showing how to do something in Illustrator, I want people to take what I'm showing them and put it to use and do it 10 times better than what I'm doing. Because if they can come back to me and say, hey, Ken, check this out, what I did with what I learned from you, then that's going to make me happy. That makes my day. And so these principles also would later serve as my method for content creation as well as teaching. So educate, inform, entertain, and inspire and challenge. All right. So what happened because of my commitment to inspiring the community? Well, quite a bit. And this is how I became an influencer. Uh, I became a producer of the Behance Portfolio Reviews in Germany. I produced over 18 events featuring 44 plus speakers. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. Uh, got into the Adobe uh, Influencer Program for the Doc region for Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. I think I'm the only foreigner in that group, which is crazy cool. Uh, I'm also an Adobe ACP, an Adobe AEL, an Adobe ACE, and now I am a mentor on the Discord channel for the Adobe Creative Careers. So if you guys are haven't heard of Discord, make sure you check that out and tell your students to check that out as well. So big shout out to them. I'm also a two-time conference producer for Adobe here in Germany. Uh, I've been a lecturer and instructor for uh, the Adobe Generation Professional Program and Edu Adobe edX back when they were doing live courses. Special thank you to Greg for that. That's how I learned a lot about streaming and creating online content as well. So Greg, definitely owe you big time. Uh, I've created content for the Adobe Abenshula. I stream live on Behance every week for the Adobe AEL. I'm a Wacom evangelist. I was the curator of the Wacom Gallery from B, uh, on Behance from 2014 to 2020, where I was showcasing uh, a new artist every eight hours on Behance. How cool is that? I got to see so many incredible talents. And unfortunately, they canceled that subscription. So uh, that's not happening anymore. But it was an amazing time in my life. 
I've also been a writer for Advanced Photoshop Magazine and Photoshop Creative Magazine, which were two of my favorite magazines as well. And I'm an influencer for BenQ, TechSmith, XP Pen, Clip Studio Paint, and now Sense Labs, something brand new. And you know, I've been doing all this while doing marketing and PR. And this is not even the tip of the iceberg. I can tell you, if people go to my LinkedIn, they're gonna like, oh my God, you have like an Adobe Bible at the front of your uh, LinkedIn, it's crazy. So, and now I teach marketing at the Digital Career Institute. And just to give you a little backstory of what the Digital Career Institute is, it started several years ago as a school for refugees, became popular. They started doing web dev and they brought in online marketing. Now I'm teaching the marketing. And now they have uh, Amazon AWS. They open the doors to all internationals and Germans living in Germany. So I have a group of 10 amazing students that are about to finish and graduate Next week, they have their final presentations. And if any of you guys are really interested in attending that, I can share the link with you guys. Just send me a message. Uh, it's going to be really brilliant because they worked with partner companies over the past year to work with their marketing. And everything that I've seen them do has been brilliant. They are an amazing group of students, and I know they're going to do well. All right. So from community development, I learned the most important thing when it comes to e-learning is to be genuine, authentic, and humanistic. And my students will tell you that I preach this on a daily basis. And that's partly because we're teaching marketing. But I also feel that, you know, as, you know, a person doing community development and teaching, you know, it's very important to be genuine, be true to who you are and be honest with what you're teaching and be human about things, be understanding, be relatable to your students. You know, I always go the distance. If my students need to reach me and get a hold of me after hours, they can. And I guess that's kind of me being American. But, uh, you know, I want to be there for them and I want to be human and I want to show them that I care about their success. And I think that I've demonstrated that. And these are the three things that, you know, you need to do when you're doing marketing or you're doing content creation as well. So it comes pretty naturally. And how I manage my class, I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, so I started with my class uh, and I set the tone. Now, some of the other classes, they have freelancers and each freelancer takes on a different module. Guess what? I do the entire year and there's only two marketing teachers out of DCI that do this. So to me, it was important to set the tone of my class so they understand how things work, how I work, and they can kind of feed off who I am. And this brings me to leading by example because I do want them to feed off who, my, who I am. Uh, for example, uh, my students know that I'm an overachiever. They know that they can come to me for anything. They've come to me and asked me for, hey, can you create a module on content marketing? Uh, or can you create a better module on branding? And I've said, yeah, I can do that. And you know what? I would produce those modules and they got added to the curriculum. Now, my students kind of fed on that. And I remember uh, Danita coming to me, who's one of my all-star students. She goes, Ken, we fed on you leading by example. So you being an overachiever makes us want to be an overachiever. Uh, encourage exploration. I only teach four days a week. That's full time though, uh, for my school from 9 30 AM till about 5 PM. And, you know, I can only teach so much in the, during the day. So I always want my students to continue to learn and explore, you know, if there's something you're interested in, you know, a topic that I've talked about, then, Hey, get on YouTube, look on Google, whatever, get out there and explore. And also I keep my zoom room 24 hours a day open. And two of my students that I met up with, uh, said that they were in zoom on Saturday working on their final presentations. Um, and they said another group, <laughs> another group came in right afterwards. Uh, so it's great that, you know, I'm encouraging my students to continue learning outside of class because that's very important. And the fourth thing is to dream big because, you know, I don't like people telling me that I can't do something. And I think my students have kind of gained that as well, too. You know, dream big. Don't let people squash your dreams and just go for the stars. So that's what I always try to do is encourage my students to go that extra mile and, you know, do what they want to do in life. All right. And again, the most important thing to me uh, when teaching is transparency. I think transparency is key. So my students know that I'm honest about everything and that I am completely always going to share them 100% uh, the truth of what's going on and give them my thoughts and my opinions. Okay, so now I just want to end on some awesome inspiration. Some, some of these things I usually do in the beginning of uh, my speeches, but I think these are going to be really awesome for you guys as well, too. I hope you guys enjoy them. The first thing that I like to tell creatives when I'm speaking at conferences is you never know when or where your talent will be discovered. 
And this is why you should get out there and promote yourself. Get out there and network, attend events. I know we're in Corona right now, but sometimes there's some live or online events like this where you can chat with other people and get to know people or, you know, uh, other online events. And then when we get back into, you know, after Corona, hey, go out there to those events. If there's an event in your town for creatives, hey, get out there, go meet other people. You know, it's important. You never know who you're going to talk to, where you're going to meet them and who's going to discover your talent. Okay. All right. The second thing I like to teach people is uh, you are your own marketing and PR manager. And usually at the beginning of speeches, I like to go around the room and ask people who they are, you know, kind of like what we do as a teacher in the first day of class anyways. But I always have my reasons for that. And the, the second reason is always you are your own marketing and PR manager. And think about this. When you started school back in, I don't know, kindergarten, first grade, whatever, preschool, you got out on the playground, you had to market yourself to other people. You had to make friends. Hey, marketing came from all the way back then. You already have those marketing skills and those PR skills. You just need to hone them a little bit better. And another quick story is that when I was about to move to Europe, my wife's boss, uh, and I don't want to say what he did, but he was a VP for a company. The wife was also a VP for a company, said, hey, Ken, you know, you should be able to connect with other people as well, higher ups, presidents, CEOs, CTOs, whatever. And I said, no, no, no. He goes, but you talk to directors, you talk to producers on a daily basis, you can do this. And so when I moved to Germany, I needed to force myself to become a marketing person. And I can't remember who said it today, but I think uh, it might've been Penny or one of the other ladies said that, you know, it's important to market yourself every day. And so I say five to five to 10 to 30 minutes a day, whether it's commenting on a post, writing a new connection on LinkedIn, whatever, getting out there, promoting who you are and what you're doing. And there's no time to start this, start as soon as possible. You know, the earlier you start promoting who you are and what you do, the better off you'll be. All right. The other thing that I like to share to people is to learn to crawl, learn to walk, learn to run, learn to jump, learn to fly. Never stop learning because that's the only way you'll soar. So to me, you know, never be afraid to stop learning. Realize that you can learn from anyone. I learned from my students. Uh, another good example is I went to a school and my friend was an international teacher at an international school, an art teacher. And I visited the studio, not when her students were in session, but I visited the studio and I saw their work. And there was a, a painting that it looked like, you know, a person who's been painting for 50 years and created. So to me, I can learn something from anybody at any age, you know, uh, whatever, you know, but I'm always wanting to learn. So learning is very important. And my final thought that I want to share to you uh, comes from this guy. I think you guys all know who this guy is. I guess in the chat, if you guys were to write his name right now, you guys would probably be able to name him right off the bat. But yes, this is Andy Warhol. And this is one quote that I really, really love. So don't think about making art. Just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. While they're deciding, make even more art. And for me, this is very important as a creative because, you know, people have this fear about getting their artwork out there. And then also there's that fear of the imposter syndrome as well, too, that also kind of stifles people in their uh they're promoting themselves but you know all it takes is one person to like your artwork so let's say we have an audience of 10 people and this is usually like an example that i like you know five people might hate what you're doing who cares about them forget them right five people might really enjoy what you're doing four of those people might really love it and three of those people might come to you and go hey you know what i would like to utilize your talents and skills so hey Get out there, show your artwork, show your creativity. Never start, never start too late. Get it out there now because you know all it takes is that one person to discover who you are and discover your talents. And to me, that's the most important thing. And so that quote from Andy Warhol is usually the quote that I always wrap things up with because I think this is something very, very important for everybody to learn. So I want to thank you guys uh, for listening to me. I want to say, hey, let's connect on LinkedIn where I have 6,000 followers and growing. Yes, super love that. And on Behance, I am streaming weekly on Sundays, uh, usually around 3 p.m. German time. I think that's really early in the morning in L.A. Uh, but it's really nice. It's really fun. I'm getting quite a bit of views there. And the videos are there afterwards. So if you miss the stream, they are still there and they serve as tutorials afterwards. So if you're really interested in checking out what I'm doing there, check that out as well, too. You can also follow me on uh, Facebook at DYC Studios 
on Instagram, you can look me up at Dusel York City Studios on Twitter at DYC Studios 212 and on Medium at Dusel York City Studios, where I kind of nerd out and talk about everything that I love from art to creativity to tech and all those kind of things. And if you look, I'm also on YouTube under Dusel York City Studios as well, too. And you'll find a lot of things there as well. So cheers. And again, thank you. Uh, I've really enjoyed being part of this today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kenneth, for sharing all that with us and the continued importance of being able to be, um, you know, promoting yourself, being your own PR manager. And we have some great comments in here. Uh, Andrew says, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, Georgina says, um, brilliant job of promoting your brand and your products. And I'm chiming in there as well. Like, I love your live stream and all that you've been doing uh, within Adobe Live. Um, uh, Diane says, fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Namita joining us from India says, you motivated me again. Um, so thank you. And um, a lot of great comments in here. Excellent. And um, a lot of other great comments about um, practical advice and um, made rooms for students with Zoom Cafe, Collaborative Express Room. So loving that it's all um, all, all their great ideas for us to bring back. Um, but thank you again, Ken, so much. And actually, we that is our last um, presentation for today. So I'm actually gonna bring back on for any of the educators that are still um, with us that presented today, I'm gonna bring them back on the screen. So really quickly, um, we'll have um, Holda Black, Penny Ann Dolan, Georgina, um, Abby, thank you again so much for joining us today. And just as a recap of everything, we hope you've enjoyed hearing from our community of creative education leaders from the Adobe Education Leader Program. We explored our first steps as creative leaders with Georgina, seizing opportunities and thinking like an entrepreneur with Penny and Dolan, the importance of networking with Dr. Holda Black, collaborative student projects with Abby, Guido, and then staying inspired with Ronaldo Lawrence and owning our own journey um, with Kenneth Shinaberry. Um, so please join us uh, next week, same time, same place on Adobe for Education Facebook and YouTube channels. We're going to continue to explore this topic of leadership within creativity and education with some more incredible Adobe education leaders. Um, so thank you again for tuning in uh, to this um, special edition of our live stream. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>